ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له ونشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله ارسله بالحق بشيرا ونذيرا بين يدي الساعه من يطع الله ورسوله فقد رشد ومن يعصهما فلا يضر الا نفسه فقال عز وجل ان احسنتم احسنتم لانفسكم وان اسئتم فلها فاذا جاء فإذا جاء وعد الآخرة ليسور وجوهكم وليد وليدخلوا المسجد كما دخلوه أول مرة وليتبروا ما علوا تتبيرا رب شرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وحل الأقدة من لساني يفكه قولي آمين يا رب Today inshallah we're giving the Jumu'ah khutbah but towards the end we're going to have a fundraiser when inshallah we have a full house but I want you to think about the value of what I'm about to teach you today. And what I'm about to talk about today is not only important for all of us, but it's important for the whole Muslim Ummah. It is something that has not been discussed. It is something so important it solves one of the biggest issues in the Muslim world and in the world in general. <clears throat> The conflict between Palestine and Israel can be resolved in one second by understanding this one issue. And that is, the Jewish people said for the Jewish people to come back to their homeland was an impossibility. And as long as the British Empire cooperated, the British Empire cooperated with the Jewish people to establish the State of Israel when the Belfort Declaration was done, as long as they were cooperating, the British Empire was growing. And as soon as they started to defy the Jewish people, it fell down and became what it is today. And the Jewish people said, the Ottomans defied the will of the Jewish people and the will of God, therefore, since they're the chosen people of God. And since they defied the Ottomans, the Muslims, they defied what the Jewish people wanted. Therefore, the Ottoman Empire went into pieces and so on and so forth. And today, it looks like an impossibility from the Jewish perspective that how can we have the, our temple of Suleiman in the place of the Dome of the Rock? And their answer is just as those were impossibilities. The six, war, six day war was an impossibility. The Ottoman Empire falling down was an impossibility. The British Empire falling down was an impossibility. All that opposed us was an impossibility. We made it, God made it, we made it. The chosen people of God, we made it. A possibility. Why am I talking about this? Today I'm going to share with you something so significant. There are 12 words Allah uses in the Quran. 12 words Allah uses in the Quran for destruction. Damdama, for example. Damdama alayhim rabbuhum. Damdama means to pound something down to the earth. You pound it. Twelve words in Quran used. I'm only. I can't go through all twelve because the whole khutbah would be on just that one. Another word, for for example, ahlaka. Ahlaka means they were destroyed. The people are no longer there. But when the second temple in 70 A.D. was destroyed by the Roman Empire. There is a very specific word of type of destruction that Allah uses. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, and in this is a very big sign. And a very big relief for the Muslims, as you will see. In Ahsantum Ahsantum li anfusikum, if you do good, then you do good for yourself. Why in asaktum falaha? And if you do evil, it's also on you. 
فَإِذَا جَاءَ وَعْدُ الْآخِرَةِ And when that second time comes, when the temple will be destroyed, لِيَسُوبُ جُوهَكُمْ So that your faces will be darkened. وَلِيَدْخُلُ الْمَسْجِدَ كَمَا دَخَلُوهُ أَوَّلَ مَرَّةِ And they will enter into your masajid, your masjid, as they did the first time. How? What will be the result of the forces coming and destroying the temple for the second time in history? It's amazing. Then Allah says, لِيُتَبِّرُوا مَا عَلَوْ تَتْبِرًا This root word means not to destroy. It means to erase all traces that it ever even existed. To erase all traces that it even what? Existed. Not only do I say this, interestingly enough, Jesus said the same thing. When he was inside the temple, and this is a very important thing, that is the sunnah of Allah, that when you disobey a prophet, when you reject a prophet, what happens if you reject Lut? What happens if you reject Nuh? What happens if you reject a prophet of Allah? You get destruction. So Jesus says that all these walls you see in the, this is in the Bible, all these walls you see in the temple, in the temple of Suleiman, you see all these walls, not one brick will be on top of another brick. This is the Bible. Then where did we get the wailing wall from? It's 10,000 bricks. The wailing wall, you know why Jews go to the wailing wall? Because they're crying for the coming back of their Messiah. That's why the Jews, they go to the Willing Wall specifically, not just for prayers, but to pray to God to bring back their Messiah. But there is a problem. The Quran says, what? We completely removed any traces of the existence of that temple. Completely erased it. Then, how did the Jews get the Wailing Wall? Kind of happened like this. Let's say before 9-11, I'm in New York City and I see the two towers. And I say, okay, these are the two towers. But then I go away for many years. In the meantime, the towers are gone. And my great, 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 great children come back and they see another building that is the most prominent building in the area and they say oh that must be that building that my great 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 grandfather told me about but it is not let me explain it through this example so it, for Muslims it becomes easier to understand when Umar bin Khattab radiallahu an entered Jerusalem when he entered Jerusalem and I'll give another proof from the Qur'an itself. When Omar bin Khattab entered Jerusalem, and he was in the church of the sepulcher, he was in the church, right? And when he, he was, it was time to pray, he was offered to pray in the church. And he did not pray in the church saying what? I, if I pray here, tomorrow Muslims might make this church into a masjid. So he prayed outside and they and that place actually became a masjid called Masjid Umar because Umar prayed over there. So if Umar, the disciple or the Sahabi of the Prophet ﷺ had the sense to understand that if I pray in the place of the Christians, tomorrow Muslims may do something wrong and take over that place. So Rasulullah didn't know. That if I go in Isra and I go to the mount, the place where the mount is, that if I go into the actual temple, which according to Quran does not exist, meaning it's been a, a, taken away. So the place the Prophet went into was not the place 
that Suleiman wasalam, the Haikal of Suleiman, it was not the temple that Suleiman wasalam, had built. This is a misunderstanding that the Jewish people have. That their mount, their, their, their kingdom of Suleiman is going to be in that area where Masjid al-Aqsa is. Not true. The second proof, I hinted to this last week. Allah says in the beginning of this surah and then throughout the surah. Subhana alladhi asra bi abdihi layla min al-masjid al-harami ila al-masjid al-aqsa. Quran uses the word church, right? It talks about the churches and uses the word church. Quran uses the word synagogue, right? But over here, Quran doesn't refer to anything that is of theirs because it did not exist. And what's interesting, even more fascinating for someone that was, because I've been studying this history now for about two, three weeks. See, the Roman Empire had conquered Jerusalem. And Jerusalem and the temple, the temple of Suleiman was also like a fort. But here's the thing. There were 10,000 Roman soldiers. 10,000 what? Roman soldiers that had a fort above and near, above and near the temple of Suleiman And when they, this, so now just keep this in mind. So there's a, there's a big fort of the Romans. And in fact, one of the to towers that looked right over the actual temple of the Jews was about 70 feet tall. The other four uh, towers, you know, the other three corners, they're only 50 feet tall. This one that was 75 feet was specifically that tall to see, be able to see everything everyone is doing over the temple of Suleiman And when the Romans decided to destroy the whole city of Jerusalem, and nothing remained as the Quran said, not only Quran said, but Josephus, who is a very famous Jewish historian said that had I not been born in the place, had I not been born in the place of Jerusalem, and this, is, this is not the Bible, it's a secular person, it's a Jewish person, he's a historian, he says, had I not been born in Jerusalem, I would have never thought there was a city here. I would have never thought there was a city here. And the only thing that remains is the fort of the Romans. Where Masjid al-Aqsa is today and where the Dome of the Rock is today, that is where the fort of the Romans was. The Romans were on top because the highest level. Then after that came the, uh, the, uh, the, the temple of Suleiman Just like in Mecca today, we have all these high buildings, including that British clock, you know, that British clock that's there. And then you have Mecca that should be bigger, but you know, you have these things that are not supposed to be bigger, bigger than Mecca. The same thing, but except it was a fortress of the Roman Empire. And when the Roman Empire came, it demolished everything of Jerusalem. And so here's the solution and something that I want to talk about. So just one time, let me go over this because we have to also do our fundraising just in actually a few minutes. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, You know, ala. They destroyed ma'alaw. You see what I'm saying? They were up high. Ma'alaw tatbira. They destroyed whatever they were over completely. So the fortress was higher. And what was under it was Jerusalem, and they completely destroyed everything that was in it. Now, I don't have that much time, so let me mention this very quickly. So is there some way to know for the Jewish people where they can have their Temple of Suleiman? Because the Christians have their Church of Sepulchre, they have their place in Bethlehem, they have their places throughout the whole area, right? And the Muslims, we have our Masjid al-Aqsa and we have our Dome of the Rock. But what good news to be able to, in, 
trust me, I can talk right now four hours on this issue. Easy. Okay? What good news that we can now go to the Jewish people and say, hey, where you are trying to force the go your temple is not the place of the temple. Because according to the, according to the Jewish books, the temple has to be in a place that has what they call in their language running water or spring water. Let me give this example very quickly. I don't know how many of you people know in the Hanafi fiqh, in the Hanafi fiqh and other fiqhs too, but specifically the Hanafi fiqh, if you have a bucket of water, if you have a bucket of water and you're not in wudu, you're in junub, you are in what? Junub, you're in a state of junub. And you put your hand into the bucket of water. Can you do wudu with that water? You don't have wudu. You're in the state of Junub, sorry. And there's a bucket of water and you put your hand in the state of Junub. You put your hand into the bucket of water. Can you do wudu with it? You can't. It becomes musta'mal. Because, anyway, this is a longer, but what I'm trying to say is this is that we have the, the same fiqh that we have, the Jewish people have. They have to bathe in running what? Running water. And if you have a bucket of water, just so I can solve this problem, if you put running water into it, it becomes clean again, but I'm not going to go into that right now in terms of Islamic law. But the only point I wanted to make was that Jew the difference between a synagogue and a temple is a temple has a bathing place. So what is the, bathe the water source? in the area of Jerusalem. That is where the temple is. The temple, a temple has to have a bathing place. You ever seen those movies where they put Christians into the water to get bathed? That's what every Jewish temple has to have, especially their main temple. And there's only one spring of water that can go, that used to at one time go up to 40 feet high in that area, okay? The, the, Niha, the Niha Spring, the Niha Spring used to be the one, and it is clear in the Bible, I don't have time now because we have to do our fundraiser right now, I just wanted to make it clear that there is very clear evidence, at least in 24 places in the Bible, that where the real location of the temple is, and it is not where the Jewish people are claiming, and what would not be true if there was a willing wall. There, there would not be one brick over the other because of the, the exact meaning of that word. Now, I think we have to do our fundraiser. So let me just uh, end with one more point. That if the Masjid al-Aqsa is the temple of Suleiman, as some people would say, where did the fort of the 10,000 Romans go? Where would the fort? Because there would have to be some fort, right? Of 10,000 Romans, where would... Okay, if you put the Temple of Suleiman where Masjid al-Aqsa is, where is the fort of the Romans where there would be a legion of 10,000 people? You would have to find some place that should be existing even today because of its how gigantic it is. That you can say, oh, this is the fort of the Romans that used to be here. No, that fort is the place where Rasulullah came down and tied his Burak and from there is Masjid al-Aqsa. Masjid al-Aqsa is the place where the Prophet led the prayers for all of the Prophets. Okay, and what's interesting is, I'll just end with this and we have to do our fundraiser. Uh, when the Prophet was asked, when he came back from Mi'raj, he was, remember he was asked some questions, oh you went on a Sra'u in Mi'raj, then the Jewish people were asking the Prophet some questions. And one of the questions they asked us, okay, describe us. Describe to us what? Jerusalem, remember? They asked him to describe him Jerusalem. The reason they didn't ask him to describe him the temple, okay, is because the temple did not exist. All that existed was some boundaries of the old city of Jerusalem and the Jerusalem area. And this is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, well, okay, so I'll end here today. Uh, I'll do my second khutbah and after that we'll do our fundraiser. So everybody bring your intention. I have told you today the solution to the problem of the Muslims in the Middle East is we need to bring to the United Nations the fact, the findings, the archaeological evidence upon evidence. I can tell you one historian after another historian. Josephus is one thing. Then the, uh, the, the last commander of the Mazada in, seven, in 73 AD, he also looks 
to the, to the destruction the Romans had done, and he said it was gone. It was gone. It wasn't there anymore. Again, in the Acts, in the Bible, again, when uh, uh, Paul is being captured, it's very close that the, the Roman uh, fortress is very close to the, the Temple of Suleiman, but, the, but there's definitely, the, the description fits where Masjid Aqsa is today to the fort of the Romans. Anyway, uh, let's do our second khutbah. أقول قول هذا استغفر الله لي ولكم ولسائر المسلمين والمسلمات. Again, we need to bring to the United Nations that the place that the Jews want to build the temple is not where the temple should be. We should look at the Bible to find the right place in the city of David, near the spring of the Niha. Okay, where there is a, a thrashing of a, a floor that's smooth. Because where Aqsa is, the floors are not smooth. They're not, they're not smooth the way that it is described in the Bible for the temple of Sulaiman alayhi salatu wasalam. Aqulu qawli hadha astaghfirullah li wa lakum wa li sari muslimina wal muslimat. So, two months ago about 1300 Jews went up to the Temple Mount on the a very uh, important day to them called the Day of Av. And the day of Av is the day that they lost their second temple. And 1,300 Jews went there and it became a big hoopla and there were issues and so on and so forth. I think it is very important for us to run with this knowledge that we have now that Masjid Mas Al-Aqsa is separate from the temple of Sulaiman wasalam, and they can go ahead, build their temple wherever their Bible tells us. This is a longer discussion I can't have right now. And uh, so in that... Uh, in that sense um, and also for Christian Zionists I want to make specifically clear to them that Jesus said not one stone will remain uh, not one stone will remain one on top of the other so if, Je if, Je if Christians believe in Jesus and Jesus said nothing will remain of the, st of the temple not even one stone of the other then we have to know the Christian Zionists have to know that where the Wailing Wall is, is not part of the Temple of Sulaiman So why does this help us? Because this brings us one major, major step to world peace. Jews can have their place of worship, as it says in the Bible, where it says in the Bible. Leave Muslims alone, leave the Christians alone, let all three religions do whatever they need to do. Solving the bigger issues is another issue, but you know, definitely this has been a contentious issue for Jews, how are we going to remove Aqsa? How are we going to remove Aqsa to build our temple? Well, your temple was never there even according to your own Bible. So this is the claim that I'm making today. And I think every Muslim should tell this to every other Muslim because it's extremely important. I mean, I have enough evidence, like I said, to talk for four or five hours on this. So uh, having said that, inshallah, we'll, I'll finish my khutbah. We're not going to pray. We're going to do a fundraiser. So everybody now bring yourself to the intention of Sadaqah of Allah. Right? I gave you a gift, and I gave this ummah a gift that's been never given to it, in the sense that no, no one has ever said this, what I'm saying right now, that this is one of the major ways we can solve our problems in the Middle East, is to put the temple in its right place. What is the price of that? 